Welcome back to the Devortorium. My name is Darnay Devore, and I'm going to be your host. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Don't think of this as a test. Think of it more as a challenge. How well do you know Romans chapter 1 through Romans chapter 10? Just 10 chapters. I'm going to give one question per chapter of the, 10, of the first 10 chapters of Romans. What I want you to do is after every question, pause the video. Write down your answer, uh, give the scripture where you got the answer from, and then go ahead and continue with the, with the rest of the questions. At the end, I'm going to give you all the answers and let's just, let's just see how well you do. Okay, you guys ready? Let's start. Number one, Paul is not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the blank. What goes in that blank? This is where you would pause, look it up, and then go ahead and fill in the answer and then continue on. But make sure you leave the scripture. Okay, we're going to get into all that at the end. Here's question number two. There will be trouble for everyone who does evil, first to the blank, then to the Gentile. Number three, this is a true or false. Paul says the righteousness of God was made known in connection with the law. Is this true or is it false? Number four, this is another true and false. Abraham was saved by his works. Now his works include uh, leaving with his family, uh, taking them out of the land they were from. It includes nearly sacrificing his own son as God told him to do. These are the works that I'm talking about. Is this how he was saved? True or false? Number five, Christ died for us because we are good people who believe and love him. True or false? Number six, the blank of sin is death, but the blank of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Fill in the blanks. Number seven, following the old law versus the new covenant is compared to what institution? Now, the institution, it's, I, it's a biblical, in, biblical institution but it's also a social institution. Everyone knows what this is, okay? They know what this institution is, but Paul compares what institution to following the old law versus the new covenant. That's the question. Number eight, we know humans suffer and we've been suffering since the beginning. Uh, that is since the fall of mankind in the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve. What else is suffering because of this very same fall that happened in the Garden of Eden? Number nine, Paul says Israel stumbled over the stumbling stone because they pursued righteousness by works rather than blank. What goes in that blank? Number 10, what is the main difference between Jews and Gentiles who are both in Christ. What is the main difference? All right, so is everyone ready for the answers? Let's see how well you did. Number one, Paul is not ashamed of the gospel because it is a power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the blank Gentile. And we find that in Romans 1, 16. Number two, there will be trouble for everyone who does evil. First to the Jew, that's the blank, then to the Gentile, Romans 2, verse 9. Here's number three, true or false. Paul says the righteousness of God was made known in connection with the law. It is false according to Romans 3, verse 21. 
that righteousness came, the righteousness of God came apart from the law, not in connection with the law. Number four, true or false, Abraham was saved by his works. As I said, taking his family and leaving their home, uh, nearly sacrificing his son, etc. This is false, according to Romans 4, 1 through 3. And that just simply says, and Abraham was saved by his faith. Some of your translations may say his belief was credited to him as righteousness. Number five, Christ died for us because we are good people who believe and love him. True or false? This answer was false according to Romans 5 verse 8. Let's read that together. Romans 5 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were still sinning. We were still haters of God. We were dead in our sin and our trespasses. We wanted nothing to do with him. And Christ still loved us. God still, he demonstrated his love for us that and, and allowed Christ to die for us. Okay, so no, we did not believe him and we did not love him. But yet and still, his love for us allowed his son Christ to die for us. Number six, the blank of sin is death, but the blank of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The answer is the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We find that in Romans 6, verse 23. Make sure we're clear on this. The wages of sin, we've earned this death. Okay, the wage, think of yourself working. You earn your wage in, in exchange for your time, your expertise, you receive payment. Well, in exchange for our sin, the payment is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. That's a free gift, folks. It's free. There's no charge for it. So anyone who's trying to charge you for it is deceiving you. It is a free gift, no charge. All it requires is your faith in Christ Jesus. Number seven, following the old law versus the new covenant is compared to what institution? According to Romans seven, two through three, it's marriage, marriage. Once you are one marriage partner has died, the one that's still living is no longer bound by law to that to that spouse that's passed away and it, it gives the analogy likewise once you've died in christ you are no longer bound to the law okay you're no longer bound to the law now you you will live again in christ jesus you've now become dead to the law the same way you become dead to your spouse when you have died as well number eight we know humans suffer and have been and have been since the beginning after the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. What else is suffering because of the fall? In Romans 8, 19 through 22, it tells us the very creation itself. Everything you see, be it the weather, be it the earth, no matter what it is, if it's the creation, it too is suffering because of the sin that happened in the Garden of Eden. Number nine, Paul says Israel stumbled over the stumbling stone because they pursued righteousness by works rather than blank. The answer is faith. You'll find that in Romans 9, 30 through 33. Israel was trying to earn their righteousness through the works of the law. Paul said, uh-uh, it's faith. Not only is it faith now, but it has always been faith. Uh, and Abraham proved that because Abraham was considered righteous by faith, not by works. Number 10, what is the main difference between Jews and Gentiles who are in Christ? Answer, according to Romans 10 verse 12, nothing. There's no difference between Jew and Gentiles that are in Christ. Okay, now look back at your answers and how'd you do? Were they the same as the ones that I'm putting out? 
Were they different? If you missed a couple, no big deal. Just read it again. Read the scriptures. Read each chapter and just kind of get familiar with what's going on in Romans chapter 1 through chapter 10. You want to keep going in Romans chapter 11? Great. Great. But I decided just to pick Romans 1 through 10 and just one question from each chapter just to kind of give us an overview of what's going on. Okay. Paul is making it clear that the gospel is a power of God and it saves Jew and Gentile alike but it saves everyone through faith and faith alone, not by works, not by works. Thank you for joining me today and stay tuned for the next video.